Hello everyone, it's Vince Doyle signing again. I'm going to be trying something slightly new. See, uh, the Overanalyst, if you, if you want to know where his channel is called, it's called the Overanalyst. I know, I'm far out. Um, he's doing something called the Inquisition, in which he is going to be tackling some of the more popular stories, or just some of the more, just bereft of creativity stories that get heralded very proudly on the Creepypasta wiki. To kind of demonstrate that, uh, you know, Mr. Lull Skeletons and the uh, administration are not very up to date in the quality control of that uh, place. So I decided that I would try to pitch in, and not just being the co host, but also doing my part on my channel. So, what the idea of what I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to be clicking the random pasta thing. I'm going to be reading it out loud to the best of my ability. I'm not very good at reading things out loud. And I'm all going to uh, critique it. Maybe in the end, I'll try to reserve most of my critique in the end. Although if I hit a point that generally strikes a back chord with me, I might interrupt to just interject right then and there. But that is the idea. Uh, this is just going to be something called ram Random Pasta Critiques, I guess is what it, the, the title is going to be called. So, if you want to see more of the Inquisition, go and check out the Overanalyst. He's much more well-spoken than me, and he's a much better critic than I am. We may not agree on some of the views, you know, some of our uh, criticisms, but the general idea is that uh, he's basically more entertaining than me. But I'm here to add my own little flavor to this, so let us begin. This is something called The Story of Catherine. And uh, this has no comments, unfortunately, so there's not really much to read in any critiques on this. But, hey, we're going to go into this blind without any hype to kind of ruin our expectations. So let's go to, uh, dig in. <clears throat> Listen closely. This story is true. I swear on it. I wouldn't be surprised if you didn't believe me, though. If you thought I was lying, making up a story. It's far-fetched. But it is real. If you're here reading this, you probably know about Jeff the Killer, Slendy Man, Slender, I'm still stuck on the calling of Slendy, Slender Man, Bloody Mary, and all of them. And all of who? Who is them? If you're referring to creepypasta, I think they should be more outlines. Bloody Mary isn't a creepypasta. It's an urban legend. That was before creepypasta. Do your homework. This story is as real as theirs. So it's not real at all. Okay. Real killers in stories. These things exist. Okay. And their success lays in the fact that no one believes they are real. Because they pretend... Because they pretend to be lies. You... Ca no, you can't pretend... To that that word choice, that those words... My, my, my... Okay. This is the story of Catherine. Catherine died over 80 years ago at the age of 8. She went missing over 40 years ago. Wait. Catherine di Okay, okay, missing death, okay. Behind her, she left a legacy. One I found. One I have found. I was at a garage sale one day several summers ago. And came across an old diary locked shut. I was naturally curious. Your, your use of commas is kind of overbearing there. Hey, you better not be eating something off the floor. Hey, miss. I'm talking to my cat, sorry. Shush. Should not, not now, Stubby. <laughs> That's my cat, I apologize. Off to a great start. I asked how much the man. I asked the man how much it would be, and he could be rid of the piece of junk he gave me. He gave it to me, wondering how he ever came to have it. I will say that that's a decent swerve on the uh, tired cliche of man who's just desperate to get rid of something. Like he even he doesn't know, didn't know he was in possession of it. So kudos to that. When I went home, I was faced with the trouble of opening the lock that sealed the agent book shut. As, the, as rusted as the small lock was, it wouldn't open. I had to bring in a locksmith to forge a key. Home again, I was able to take the first page of the diary, which read only, Property of Maggie Patman. I'll explain the rest of the diary later. 
For now, I want you to meet Catherine, whom I have done extensive research on. It was surprisingly difficult to find anything about her or her history. It appears that her entire family line has died out, and she has nothing she has not one living relative of any nature. That is something I found particularly disturbing. I could not find any further information regarding Catherine via the internet, but well, 40 years ago, the, you know, the internet wasn't around. There doesn't appear to be any document regarding her online. I had to turn towards the libraries for help, and I found myself receiving copies of documents from a library in Sac Sacagawean, Canada. It was odd how eager the library was to hand over these hand over documents, having I did not present any particular reason for wanting them. A week later, I received copied documents regarding the Patman family, investments, family, etc. I discovered the family lived in a three-story farmhouse out in the country of in the country of Sacagawean. In the country in Sacagawean, excuse me. I thought you were calling Sacagawean a country. <laughs> excuse me. They owned and operated a moderate-sized farm which they grew crops and raised barn animals. The, uh, the area had since been demolished and the farmland taken over, but the land has since not been able to yield as much as a pea pod. The family had been large, Catherine had five older siblings, and her aunt and uncle lived in the home as well as their two children, both also older than Catherine. I have come to believe that the family was respectable at the time, as the family held several awards regarding large pigs and respectable vegetables. I was alarmed to, fur to further discover that the family was discovered on April 15th murder in the farmhouse, including Catherine. The fields at the, a distance appeared fine, but upon closer expression had been rid of all crop. S corn stalks held no corn, pea pots were empty, all the barn animals were let loose and were wandering in a nearby, into the nearby tree cover aimlessly. I was surprised I had never heard of such a murder on late night TV. You couldn't hear about something that you weren't alive to see. And if you're at that age, to clarify, apparently the police and government kept the... Wait a minute, if you're this old, what are you, like 60, 50 years old? What are you doing researching about this? Apparently the police and government had kept the incident away from the media as not to cause alarm. Each family member was identified by distant relatives and neighbors and received an autopsy. Here is something tremendously shocking. Why is there a comma there? There doesn't need to be a comma there. <sighs> Each member died of a stab wound to the top of the head. However, each member also received an additional stab wounds prior to the fatal blow. One on the right shoulder, one on the right knee, and each person had all toes severed completely. Apparently, the police were afraid of the murders were made public by the killer, they'd be more inclined to strike again. However, that did not happen, and the messy murder remained little, a little known fact, and no reports can be found online. These, this murder distracted me for a while, because after I discovered this, I looked online for similar murders. I found over 30 or, uh, missing a V, but whatever, 30 other account, no, oh, I'm missing it now, excuse me, that's my stupidity. 30 more accounts of murders where the victims had trademark wounds. These, however, were passed off as animal attacks, gang-related activity, random murder, and or unsolved. No one seemed to remember the Patmans or their own cruel fate. The weeks following the murder of the Patmans, police received several reports of locals who lived in the town next to the Patmans' former farm. Witnesses claimed to have seen Catherine, heard her singing, and on one occasion, a neighbor spoke to her. The neighbor claimed that she was jumping rope and humming. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. And she, then he, when he had asked where she had come from, she only replied, I only want to play, and skipped off. 
The police tried to assure the locals that Catherine was dead. She had been identified and buried. But following more complaints, the police were faced with no choice but dig up Catherine's body. What they did, when they did, everyone was shocked to find a body. The body of a mangled, bloody, stray dog. Immediately, people began to search for Catherine, dead or alive, but came up empty-handed. I couldn't find any information regarding what happened after that. I could only assume that they never found anything and the sighting just stopped occurring. I cannot wrap my head around such a mystery and murder has managed to be been kept so quiet. Perhaps it, perhaps it is just no one has looked until now. How could something like this be possible? H how does one become like Jeff and Bloody Mary? How do such things come to exist? And this is what happened to Catherine. Happened to ha this is what this is is that ha what happened to the Catherine? Wait, is that what happened to the Catherine? This is that what happened to the Catherine? Okay. Am I the? Am I am the only left? I am the only left with questions and seem to have exhausted all my sources on information. The diary. I said I would get back to my to the diary, and I have. Unfortunately, just months ago, a candle was caught. A candle caused the left side of my room to burn down. The diary did not burn. No, it vanished. You know, commas exist, motherfucker. In the burnt bits of my left left of my room, there were, was no part of my diary to be found, including the metal lock pieces, leaving me to believe that it must have been vanished. It must have vanished. <sighs> been holding that in, sorry. And I have only remember the first two pages by heart. The first page, as stated, read only Catherine's full name. Catherine Maggie Patman. The second page read a poem, and like all pages of the first one, I had to put a great effort into finding out what it said, as the diary was written by an eight-year-old. The poem read, Head, shoulders, knees, and toes. The head where the mem is where the memory goes. On your shoulders it's a heavy weight, something your poor knees can't take. And without your toes you will not run. You will never end my fun. The poem is a bit disturbing for a child, and I am puzzled as to where she learned it, or if she wrote it herself. After this page, there were a dozen or so pages poorly written about her family life. It appeared that being the youngest caused Catherine great distress. She, of, she often wrote about how stupid her older siblings were and how no one seemed to pay attention to her. She apparently only ever received hand-me-downs and never had anyone to play with. No one to call but her cat. No one but her cat, Mittens. One entry, one entry had clearly been cried on and it told me how Catherine got angry once and threw her mom's face, which killed her cat. Which had killed her cat. She also wrote how happy she was because her mom and dad, everyone paid attention to her because she had been so close to the cat. Continuing reading, I found out that Catherine had been hurting chickens and dogs, without getting, without getting the same attention as mittens. I can only imagine she was trying to get her best to get the attention, to get attention, she, like she had, had. She had had when Mittens died, and it seems like she was getting more disappointed and angry that the harm she was giving these animals was not giving her what she wanted. Eventually, she finally managed to kill a hen. Her parents resorted to locking her in a room, where she began to feel neglected and lonely. The last page of the diary was about how she wanted to love the love and attention she deserves, and she knew how to get it. The writing was too sloppy and poorly written and spelled for me to be able to know what she planned to do exactly. I can only assume that is what led to the death of the household on the near that next night. She never did get the attention she wanted. Never. 
No one outside the community found out about the murder, and she hasn't been credited for a single murder after. She must have wanted the fame the others have, but she has never shared it. She must be angry. If this story has done what it's supposed to, then her story will be out there now, and she will, can have the attention she wants so badly. She can let everyone know her. She can make anyone afraid of her skipping and humming at night. Head, shoulder, knees, and toes. Because people will know who she is and what she will do. This was not very good. <laughs> I, I, I tried my best to read it in a serious voice, and you heard me pick apart a lot of it. But here's the thing. This story, though not very good, has a decent amount of potential buried underneath it. The one thing that you would immediately have to do is take out any pretense of the creepypasta. It's, you cannot acknowledge... Like... Any story that pretty much acknowledges Jeff the Killer is shit from the get-go. It's just shit. Like, Jeff the Killer is shit. Is It's shit. I will not be have be contested on this. And the fact that she acknowledges it as something that, that she wants... This person wants their story to be heralded to that extent. I'm afraid it's not going to work that way. This, sto this story is... The, is I will say this is much better than Jeff the Killer. Like, there is a moderate sense of story structure there is a sense of um mild sense there is no real sense of escalation though i will say that the character catherine has some potential it sounds, sounds like a legit like a potentially interesting character especially the backstory uh which being that she's a little girl who started hurting people and hurting animals to try to get attention from people and I don't mind that as a backstory, but the problem is it's introduced right then and there and it's given little or no weight to it. Also, it also kind of puts it in perspective, like, yo, yeah, an eight-year-old brutally murdered her parents. Like, I don't put it past an eight-year-old to be able to do that, but stabbing them in the head, shoulders, and knees, like, how does she do that? How does she accomplish that or first or strap them down while they were asleep? But this is just another thing, a problem I, again, they always come, I think what immediately ruined the story for me was, and again, it's, this story is close to decent, but again, that creepy, that this is a true story like Jeff the Killer bullshit I've heard, like, take that out of the story and don't mention that and you'll have a, what may be considered a decent story on, on your hands. Like, you need to relook this and have someone check it out for all the grammatical errors. And uh, the surprisingly, there's few, but it's just the overuse of commas, like head, shoulders, knees, and toes. Where like, the very last one doesn't even have commas in it. Very few periods, but other than that, it's fine. It's also too short. This strikes me, and I'm guilty of this too. I want to make that clear. My first creepy puzzle was absolute garbage. And Ollie enough is on the creepy puzzle wiki, but what are you gonna do? Uh, it's not on the creepy puzzle wiki. It's on creepypasta.com, and I, I want to go and have them ask if they could take it down because it's real. No, I'll keep it up, but I, I'll, I actually want more people to go and look at it critically. Like, look it up if you want to. Um, you know, no, I'm not gonna say what it is. People will probably be able to figure it out. But I want to save that for a very special... I want to read that personally and have someone on to kind of take me to town on that. So uh, I'm not going to not gonna spoil it right here. But basically, yeah, my first puzzle I re wrote was shit. And the, one of the problems that I had, and this is, uh, I think, a problem with a lot of writers who are trying to get their thing out as quickly as they can is that just because it takes a while to write, that doesn't mean it's going to take a while to read. You know, they had that joke on Futurama, and it, in hindsight, that's, that joke makes so much sense as a writer. Like, it, it takes forever to write something, and you think it's going to take a long time to read, and you think you've done a good job, but go back and read what you wrote, and actually take a look at it from a critical perspective. This right here stretches me in this kind of story that this person was in such a, not even a hurry, they were so eager to get the reception for for how 
the this story would have been uh, viewed that they didn't take the time to actually construct it in a way that would be really effective. Like the like the plot twist of this, you can argue that it's a twist that this eight year old girl is doing like who seemed like an innocent who was like uh, kidnapped and murdered. Like you could make the wait, how did she get even get murdered? But okay, they found her, they identified her, but it was a dog. Th they did autopsy. Oh, God damn it, I can't even. Okay, they identified this girl, and uh, okay, back to what was basically the the like basically it's supposed to be a plot twist that this girl, who seemed like a complete innocent in the whole thing, uh, was also a murderer and only. But also, if you want to make it more effective, and I'm talking directly to the person who wrote this, um, what you should have done, make, make it like a very well-known thing in your town, where everyone knows about this horrendous murder of this innocent girl and her family. Like, maybe you've seen her personally and talked to her. Like, she would come out, she seemed like a sweetheart. But maybe you get occasional glimpses to see that she'd been doing it in the middle of the night. And you kind of build up to that. Then you read the diary and see that it was actually this girl with this, uh, like, basically middle child syndrome, what, what, except for the youngest. Like, she's this girl who has a lot of issues and seeing that she's really doing it because she wants attention and it's not working. She's getting increasingly more frustrated until it builds up. And don't have it where she, this, stu this poem nonsense, it's stupid. This, this poem is really... It's stupid. I understand you want your own thing, but no. Now, and again, this isn't. This is just you trying. To, and I, I, I'm not trying to make any accusations here. This is y the writer trying to make his own character. It stop putting focus on making the next cool character for people to latch onto. It becomes a fad, and fads fade away. Slenderman used to be considered a legitimately creepy and well thought out creature and there was a interesting lore behind it until people latched on to that and it became a fad now it's overstayed as welcome when's the last time you've heard about a scary slender man story or video game it doesn't happen because it's overdone no one's scared about it of it because it's it's not it's too popular to be scary it's kind of like freddy krueger or michael myers it's like, no matter how well thought out either of their movies are, or any of the stories involving them, they're still going to be recognized as a pop culture icon that can't really affect anyone. And this, you're asked, you want your character to be, you don't want your character to become that. You want this story to be completely timeless, that you'll read it any time and you can meanly get chills no matter what the circumstances. Now... Another thing I think you should have done was a uh, 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 kind of callback. Not really callback. There would have been a decent foreshadowing to the guy's, your narrator's house, like half of his room burning down. Although that, from a candle, that seems a bit extreme. But why is he using a candle? Like, is it one of those scented candles? Well, whatever. Because that's a more practical thing. Like, uh... Her idea is that if she burns down a house and she looks like a victim, like a, like her family has been doing that, that she will get more attention from the people around her. And again, this character has potential to be interesting. Like this little girl with this extreme victimhood complex to where she will hurt people around her and then play innocent just so people can see her and think that she's this really pained and innocent girl so she'll get the attention she wants. That's my idea for how this character could have worked, but it's that she's just this annoying, psychotic girl who randomly can kill these people. And, and again, how did they find her dead? You said in the beginning of the story that she was kidnapped and murdered. How was she kidnapped? Who kidnapped her? How did she hide away? See, that's another thing. It feels like you wrote that part and you legitimately forgot about it. You have to have the story completely outlined in your head. Basically, 
You shouldn't start writing a story if you don't have a beginning, middle, and end thought out. What you do in between all those parts are meant to build up on each single segment. Here, it feels like you just started writing a story and you kept going until you felt like it was time to finish it. And again, I can't stress enough, out of all the, a lot of the stories I've read on the Creepypasta Wiki, I'd argue that this story does not deserve to be deleted on the basis that this story is close to decent. Uh, take out the creepy puzzle thing and it will be a, uh, you could argue that this is a decent story. And this writer seems like she, she or he or she legitimately has potential to improve. Do not make any of these mistakes again though, because I hate to see someone who actually has this legitimate amount of potential throw it away because they're trying to be a new fad. Never try to be a fad. They fade away and they're forgotten. Or they fade away, they get forgotten, they become retro and become cool again. But either way, you want to make a story for the sake of making a story. If you want to just promote a character, then draw fan out or, or, or like commission someone to draw fan art and have them do that. Like, really... I think I think I said enough. So uh, this is Vince Twelve signing out. They've been the first of random creepy poster cr critiques, and long live the. Inc